All right, so we're back with another MongoDB Discord chase tutorial. I'm going to show you guys how to read data from your MongoDB database using Mongoose. So first, we need to actually save some records into our database. So what we'll do is we'll create a simple command that's going to allow us to save uh, notes to the database. So the first thing we'll do is set up a simple command in our message event. So if message.content, uh, that to lowercase, starts with create note and we're using starts with because our create note command is going to uh, have arguments so to get the actual uh, arguments or arguments I should say because it's literally just a string that we want to save for the user uh, we're gonna basically just do it very simply I'm gonna get the index of the space and then we're gonna use that to get the rest of the string so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use the slice, or not slice, index of, and we're going to basically get the index of the space. So that's going to be the number 11 because you can count all of the characters and you're going to see that the space is going to fall on position number 11. So this is how the command is going to look like right we basically want to get everything after this space we don't care about anything before this space because that's just a command okay so index of gives us the first uh, it gives us the position of the first occurrence of a substring okay so once we have that position we can go ahead and get the rest of the string by simply just using the slice function we're going to pass in the index now this is going to give us everything starting from the uh, the index that we passed in so it's going to include that index as well so that means it's going to include the space and we don't want the space so we're going to just add one and that'll give us the actual entire description everything after the command with the space it's going to give us everything after that okay so i'm going to just console log both the index and the description real quick just so you guys can see uh, actually let me do this separately Okay, there we go. And let me go into my server. So let's just go ahead and do create note. Hello world. And you can see over here we have 11, which is the index of the first occurrence of the space. And then we have the note. Okay, so that's fairly simple. So to actually create the note, like I said, we need to uh, save it to the database. But how do we save stuff again? Well, we need to use a schema for that. So we're going to go ahead and just create a quick note schema. We're going to make this very simple. And just going to copy and paste everything so we don't have to write everything out and just change up some of these things. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to save the description. And schema types string. And I'll just save the user ID of the notes. And I'm not really going to play around with the options too much, though you can if you want to. You can set it to be required. Actually, you know what? I'll just do that real quick because it's better practice. Might as well, right? Uh, we'll do required. True. And then let's just copy and paste this. And there you have it. So that's our note schema. So now we can import that uh, up here. Like so. All right, so now let's save the note by simply just doing await uh, note.create. We're gonna pass in the description and we're gonna pass in the user ID like that. Okay, so that's just the description since uh, the value that we want to map the description to is the same. We can just pass it in like this. So we don't have to do description, description like that. All right, so we're also going to wrap this inside a try catch. So we want to always handle our errors. So in case if an error does happen, we can send a message to the user. An error occurred. I don't even, uh, let me actually do this. Uh, fail to save notes. And then we'll do saved notes successfully. Note saved. 
All right, so let's try this out, and we're going to go into our MongoDB compass, and we're going to look at our data. So let's try it out. Note saved, and if I go into here, you're going to see we have our note over here. Perfect. Okay, great. So we know that this works. Now, how do we actually read this data from the database? Well, when it comes to searching in a database, there's multiple ways that you can actually search and how you want to retrieve your data and what you want to retrieve. Uh, that depends on the method that, well, the method that you want to use depends on uh, what you want to actually get. So let's say, for example, if you want to retrieve an individual item, well, you have to narrow down what you want to retrieve, what you want to retrieve based on a certain a uh, unique value. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a bunch of different records that you might not even want. So basically, searching can be as vague as possible, but it can also be as specific as possible. And it's up to you on how you want to search for that. I highly recommend you guys visit the MongooseJS documentation and look at several examples of how they search. I'm only going to cover a couple of basic examples of searching in this video. So what we'll do is we'll simply just create a command that retrieves notes. So first, let's go ahead and do get notes. Okay, and we might have arguments too, so we'll leave that alone. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to create, uh, we want to basically make it so that if there are no arguments, we're going to get all the notes. So const, uh, let's do this message.content.split, okay? So because we want to also be able to retrieve notes by an ID. So for example, let me actually show you guys the signature of the command. So the command could look like this. It could look like get notes, get notes, uh, you know, and then the ID like that. So we want to be able to retrieve notes like that, okay? So if the args, the, if the length of args is, let's see, if the args length is zero, then that means we are going to go ahead and retrieve the note based on, right, we're just going to retrieve all the notes. If the args length is one, then we're going to go ahead and retrieve the note by the ID. So what we're going to do is very simple. So what I'll do this if let's say if args dot length. So this means that there is actually um, there's actually an argument. Okay, let me just write some console log real quick. Argument found else console log no args. Let's try out this command and make sure that it works. So get notes. All right, so this is argument found. So it seems like this is not working the way we expect it to. Uh, so if args.length is equal to zero, if so, if there's no arguments, then we will search the entire database. Okay, so, and if there is an argument, then we will just retrieve it by that ID. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and do constant notes equals await note.find okay we're going to call the find method okay and what we want to do from here is we want to pass in a condition or a filter so basically this is going to filter out what we want to actually search for because if you do dot find it's going to give you every single document it's going to give you everyone's notes and you don't want everyone's notes you only want your notes right so to do that we can pass in the condition and basically following our schema Right, you can search based on the description, but it has to be exact, or you can search based on the user ID. Well, you can also use regular expressions too if you want to search by uh, substrings, but we'll search by user ID since that's likely what you'll be doing too. So we just have to pass in the ID, and that should be pretty much it. Now, if you console log notes, you're going to notice that this is going to uh, basically be an array. Let me just go ahead and send that real quick. So let's see what happens. Uh, let's see, nothing's happening. What's going on?
if args dot length is equal to zero, I'm pretty sure. Maybe I messed something up actually. Actually, you know what? Yeah, I think I know what I did wrong. Let me see. Ah, oh, I see. So we don't have any arguments, so. Oh, because it considers. Okay, okay. Maybe that's why my logic was wrong first. Okay, so yeah, it considers the. I, I, I forgot. The command itself is an argument too. So we'll just change this to if args.length is equal to 1. Uh, and they'll do this. If it's equal to 2, that means we actually have an argument. Okay, cool. So now let's try this out. So wait for our bot to log in. Okay, so it gives us the the note, but look over here, you can see that it's an array. Okay, but what if we had multiple notes, right? If we had multiple notes, how would we display that to the user? Well, like I said, this is where searching becomes, and it's not difficult, but it depends on like how you want to search, right? If you want to search for multiple notes, then obviously that's going to require you to do a couple of more tinkering with your code. But it's not too difficult. I'll show you how I would handle that in a very simple uh, situation. So first, let's just create another note. Okay, so get notes. This is still going to give us the first note that we saved from earlier. But if we want to get all of our notes, then we'll do this. Uh, let's go over. Let's just get rid of this. Let's get rid of uh, this. Let's create a variable called description, and we're going to use a for in loop. So const i in notes. So i is going to be the index, and notes is just the array of notes. And we're basically going to build up a string. Uh, we're going to parse the index i and add one to it, because the index starts at zero, and we want to label our notes. And we're going to get the notes by simply subscripting them. So notes subscript I and then description. And we're going to add a new line character and you'll see what it looks like. I know it might be a little bit confusing, but you'll see what it looks like in just a sec. We'll send this string to the user. So this will send all the notes to the user, but there's going to be a problem though. If you have a ton of notes in the database, you're going to end up running into an error. So you might want to set a limit of how many notes you want to display to the user. So you can also do that by simply limiting how many notes are being displayed. And I'll show you how to do that. So let's just create more notes. Hi, hi, hi. Hello. Hi. Uh, and then you can see that the notes, the list of notes increases, right? So let's just say we want to get only five notes. How would we do that? Well, you can pass in options for the uh, for the find method. So the next part over here, we're just going to pass in null. And then for the third part, we're just going to pass. These are the actual options we're going to pass in. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set the limits. So if I look at the documentation, there's actually, there should be, uh, let's see. There should be a way to see the options. Okay, there we go. So limit, okay, so limit. So you wanna limit yourself to a certain number. So we're gonna do limit, let's just do three. And you'll see that it's only going to give us three notes. So let's try it out. Just make sure it works. It gives us three notes. Okay, so it only gives us the first three. Okay, but what if we wanted to get, uh, let's say, notes after a certain, I don't know, uh, certain position, right? You can use the skip. You can use skip, which will skip the first 10 over here. It will skip the first 10. But let's say we want to skip the first three. We can do that. And you can just see that it's going to give us the remaining three. Uh, wait a minute. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it did. So yeah, see, it works. So yeah, pretty much you can use this to your advantage. So I just wanted to show you guys how that works. But you want to keep in consideration that if you have a database with a ton of data, 
um, it's going to be difficult to retrieve all of them. So you, you're going to want to use probably pagination or you're going to want to set a limit to how many notes or items the user can retrieve. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Okay, now there's also one more thing that I want to show you guys before I end this video, and that's going to be searching by ID. So quite often you want to retrieve a single item, but how do you retrieve a single item? Most of the time you want to retrieve it based on the ID of the record. In our case, the only thing that we can use is the object ID because we don't have our own unique value that we can use. You cannot use the user ID or the description. So we're going to use the object ID. So how we do this is, well, here's the problem. Uh, if you don't show the user ID to the user, there's no way they'll be able to actually retrieve it. So I'll leave that to a decision that you can make. If you want to show the ID to the user, you can do that, um, but it's up to you. Uh, in our case, I'm just going to kind of like, I'm going to just show you how the find one or find by ID works. So let's just say if the args.length is not equal to one and it's equal to two. So we're just going to get the argument. Uh, actually, I'm going to label this as arg. And we'll do uh, args at subscript of one. Yep. And let's just console log this. Get notes. Okay, so that's going to wait. Okay. There we go. So that doesn't. Okay, there we go. So that's going to hit this else case, which is good. And we're basically going to want to find the, uh, the the note by the ID. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to simply go ahead and just use the find one or you can use find by ID. So find one works, uh, the find one function pretty much just searches for one uh, item in the database and you want to pass in a filter obviously. So you can search for a single item based on a unique value. Uh, in our situation, it's better if we use find by ID. So we can just pass in the ID just like that. And that would work. So let's just check to see if an item was found. So if it was, we will go ahead and send the description. And if no item was found, we will just say note not found. Okay. So the difference between find one, find by ID, uh, let me rephrase that. The difference between find and find by ID and find one is that find returns an array, but find one will return one item. Uh, find by ID should always only return one item as well because uh, in MongoDB, everything is, the object ID is unique. When I'm saying find by ID, I'm referring to this object ID. So let me go ahead and just copy and paste that. So let's do get notes for you're going to see it should say I actually threw an error. OK, so the actual the it, the mongoose actually threw the error. Uh, that's because four is not a valid ID. But if I pass in a valid ID, it will actually uh, give us the note itself. Let me go ahead and try this. Okay, there we go. So that's how you can search for an individual item. Okay, so yeah, it's a little bit weird using these IDs, but you can use them uh, if you want to. Okay, um, but yeah, so that's gonna be pretty much it for this tutorial. Uh, hopefully you guys like this, and actually there's something wrong with this real quick. I uh, I think I'll, f I think let me fix this actually. Actually, um, we should probably wrap this in a try catch. Yeah, let's just do that real quick. And we'll just say note not found. So if we type in like a like an invalid ID, it's just going to uh, it's just going to. Uh, give us a message at least. But that's gonna be pretty much it for this tutorial. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in my next one. Peace out.